Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of The Ultimate Career Leap. All right, good afternoon everybody. I'm coming to you today from a special time. It is 12.30 Eastern time. It is 5.30 p.m. UK time. And I am here with David Bloxham, the CEO of GCS Recruitment. And we are going to be discussing recruitment on a global perspective because David's company is located in Europe and in the US and he does business globally. So thank you for joining us today, David. Introduce yourself. Hi there, VJ. And thanks very much for the, the invitation. Um, as I said, I'm the CEO of GCS. GCS is a, um, a global technology recruitment firm. Um, I have been with GCS for 24 years, so a long time in the business. Um, we primarily work in Europe and in the US. In the US, we have offices in New York and Austin. Um, and um, in Europe, we have offices in Germany, Holland, the UK, and the Republic of Ireland. Um, you know, we have about 70 people working for us. Um, we work in all locations around the globe. Um, I think we were just saying that we're placing people from Israel to Peru to Singapore. And we're hiring people pretty much from everywhere to go anywhere. And it's quite interesting, you know, the, the kind of global workforces we're helping our clients build. Um, we work with companies like Liberty Global, Discover, Amazon, Facebook, and many, many really exciting startups. And it's just really interesting now, particularly with more remote workforces, just how people are going about building these kind of global remote teams. And um, yeah, it's uh, very, very different to, to, to what I was used to 24 years ago. So yeah, there's been quite a lot of changes and particularly in the last six months. So it's great to, to come aboard and see how I can help your, your uh, viewers. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. Well, what kind of changes have you been seeing in the last six months, right? With the pandemic hitting everybody globally, um, talent, you know, acquisition has been so different. And even how you go going after clients, I would think is a little bit different now with so many people working remotely. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the first thing to say is obviously the, one of the key changes is it's, it hasn't been as busy. Um, if we, if we take it on the basis of, um, in the Western world, I guess this really started, for the UK and the USA, and I'm, I'm based in the UK, um, but work very close in the US and Europe. It really started in about March, didn't it? So in March, mm-hmm. it, was a bit of, it was a bit of a joke, really. Like, oh, it's going to be over in two weeks. Um, unfortunately, not. <laughs> um, and um, so, yeah, so I think, you know, the obviously severity of the situation really, really hit in April. And probably like most recruitment businesses, probably like most businesses, we took a huge hit in terms of the amount of business we had, um, our sales, our revenue. Um, and that was the, the key change first. You know, clients stopped recruiting because, not because I think their business changed, but because I think that <laughs> they couldn't work out how to recruit in this new world. You know, how do you onboard someone if you're working remotely? How do you interview someone? The whole world just changed straight away. And what we saw was companies, clients, talent teams, candidates even just taking stock and saying, how can this, how can we make this work? Um, from May, June time onwards, we have seen a real pickup in the market. Um, okay. I'm going to say it's back to the levels that it was in February 2020. And our targets that we set in March 2020 have been rolled up in a ball and chucked out the window <laughs> um but we're we're surviving and thriving i think is what we like to say vj so if you look at us now in october and the amount of vacancies we're working on the amount of interviews we're arranging are probably at around kind of 85 percent to 90 percent of the levels they were in february so we're back to the normal sort okay of well i think the key changes that we've seen is that companies have worked out how to recruit in this new world, how to onboard candidates, how to search for candidates, how to interview candidates, how to assess candidates in a, a completely remote way. And they're making plans now for this 
new normal, that horrible word, to be how it's going to be now for the next six months, 12 months, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, <laughs> we're in the UK, both of us are in the UK, and it's kind of, you know, you can see the, the, the news, if you're watching the news, VJ, you're like, you know, case rising and this is happening, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I think it's similar in the US, although I don't think the cases ever really went down in the US, did they? It was kind of pretty much level them. Uh, well, no, the U.S. has been seeing plenty of spikes again. So some places like New York had got down, but they're starting to spike. Other states had already spiked. So, yeah. So I think the government's quite understandably are trying to kickstart the economy, get children back to school, you know, culture, et cetera, et cetera. But it's not as easy as they thought, I think. So companies are, I think, generally tend to think, well, this isn't going away. So we need to focus our businesses and focus our employment efforts in the, you know, bearing in mind that most of us will be working from home, most of us will be working remotely. Right, and right. What I've seen is that most companies have actually worked out that actually this isn't the end of the world. Um, we can still exist. Um, there's certain, obviously, industries that it is the end of the world for, and obviously we'll talk about that maybe a little bit more. What what industries to focus on and where to where to focus your efforts on trying to find a job. But you know, most companies that have a viable business in this world now have worked out how to make it viable and how to grow, and are now hiring. So that's exciting for us because obviously that's what we do, and we're about connecting expert talent to innovative companies. And there's plenty of companies out there now that are, are doing just that. So we're starting to see real pickup in the market in certain areas. So it's exciting, but it's definitely different. And um, coming as you do, and you've worked obviously in talent for many years, it's, it's a people-based business, right? You meet people, mm -hmm. you you know, you shake their hands, you get to know them, you share a drink with them, share a coffee with them, you, you know, you go and meet your client. You know, all these things that we took for granted, really. You know, just cannot do yeah. it. You know. And, so, you know, there's pros and cons to it, but genuinely in a people-based industry, it's very weird, but we're, 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 we're learning how to, to make the best of it. Good, good, good. I mean, I know like um, IT didn't have to, they had a, a smaller adjustment because a lot of IT had already been used to working remotely, yeah. right? Like that wasn't yeah. not normal, but for some industries, it was hard figuring out how to adjust and go online with your business when you're so used to being brick and mortar totally and there was no you know the, there was no reason for any company to do it because and partly because you've just probably spent all this money on office space and you want the guys to be or the people to kind of be in the office using it right right um if you don't it's a huge waste of you know capital which you could be spending on other things, but you're going to spend it on this lovely office. And if you think back to this time last year, the sort of offices that were being built would kind of make the office a home, right? You know, you think right, right. Google and the Facebook and the big tech companies, but most companies going away on companies like WeWork and the sort of facilities they were building made you want to be in the office all the time, right? You know, unfortunately now that can't happen. But um, but genuinely, I think. Um, you know, they have, you know, we, you've we had to kind of react to that. But yeah, companies weren't prepared for it. Um, and it took them two to three months to work out how to do it. IT, as you said, was less affected for two reasons, I think. I mean, we're seeing good strength in the technology market. You know, I think if any of your viewers are watching this and they're still in IT, there is a huge demand for, for what you do. First thing is, if you're moving everyone remote and you're digitizing everything, then it's the IT guys that you need to do it. So we've actually seen mm -hmm. a tick in demand for cloud service engineers, infrastructure engineers, network engineers, and people that build remote working infrastructure, people that have Azure skills, AWS skills, um, Teams skills, those types of things, Office 365, Google Docs, that sort of stuff. But also, like you said, quite rightly, if there was one industry that was working remotely quite a lot of the time, it was the IT industry because they were able to do it. And sometimes they were working in kind of remote global teams and programmers quite a lot, you know, software engineers and that. They 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 like to work from home. They like to kind of get on with their work and they knew that they could communicate with things like Slack. And every other industry, there's probably 
very behind that. Um, have you heard this joke of like, um, you know, um, who who drove the digital transformation in your business? And it's like a multiple choice thing. And they say mm -hmm. CEO, the CIO, or CV19. <laughs> Drove digital transformation. So, yes, that's, uh, yeah, I've seen that kind of fly around. I think digital transformation has been driven more in the last six months than it was in the previous kind of six decades. Right, 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 right. Yeah, I think you're right. Like companies had to. First, it was the okay, we might be going back into the office in two to three months, so we'll wait it out. And then it's like, wait, we're not going back. So, how are we going remote and all those shifts? Yeah. So, you're seeing more people hiring now. You still see a lot of people in tech. Yeah. Um, what do you look for in a candidate now? Like how can, how can an average candidate stand out now? I think that's really, really interesting because I think, <laughs> you know, for me, technology, and we spoke about this a little bit in our prep, has always been around the skill set, you know, and um, it's always been around, we need a Java programmer. Can you do Java? Yes, I can. No, I can't. And it's pretty, pretty difficult to, to kind of, make up java skills you know you either can do it or you can't it's like saying i can speak french and if you can't speak french you're not going to get away with it really as soon as you speak to a french person right so for me i think that's really really important the, the key hard skill element of these jobs hasn't gone away you know what i think we're seeing from people is an understanding that number one where you are <laughs> is not so important you know um, that's the key thing. Um, a lot of companies we're seeing are saying, say, you're hiring in New York, but I will consider people who have a great internet access. In, you know, so I will consider people in Philadelphia. I will consider people in Washington if they could come into New York kind of once a week or once every two weeks for a kind of team meeting or something. Right. So location has become less important. So I think you should widen out your searches. Um, I also think in some ways, when I say tech savvy, it's obviously within IT, right? But being able to present yourself in a video conference, having the technology, setting yourself up in this way, there won't be a face-to-face -face interview, okay? You are definitely going to have an online test. You're definitely going to have two or three video conferencing interviews, um, you are definitely. definitely going to see presentations and you're probably going to be onboarded remotely. Um, if you're not prepared for that, it's a whole new world. And, and if, if, if you can't present yourself well on a video conference call, if you don't like doing online tests as part of the tech tests, um, however good your skills are, I think that you'll struggle. So it's definitely something that, that, that your viewers and for the people that you're that are looking for careers in this don't just rely on the skill set that you've got rely on you know using of the new technology and being able to present yourself well in this new kind of virtual world we've seen candidates that we know are great not get interviews because they weren't very good at doing that and we've seen mm -hmm. candidates that maybe didn't match exactly the, the job spec that have done fantastically because they just present themselves very well Right. So now with the fact that you are having all these virtual interviews, people can actually sell themselves a little more on the personality side and the soft skills if they know how to present well, as opposed to, well, I'm really good on the technical side of things, but not on the soft side. Yeah, yeah. And, um, we talk quite a lot about you know, impressions and, mm -hmm. and you know, how you make those and, you know, it's body language, isn't it? And, um, you know, that, that's a kind of a key thing in an interview and, you know, even kind of going down to CVs and that sort of thing, you know, it's the way you make an impression on a video interview is, is very different, you know, like right. going, going down to, um, going down to the basics, like I'm six foot four, right. You want to know about, you might not know that because obviously I'm on a video, right. <laughs> so therefore my kind of coming in being six foot four, which generally for people is quite impressive. <laughs> it's, it's not very impressive anymore. So I could I could be five foot four, no one would know, right? So right, you know, right. these types of things, you haven't got the body language element. You you have to keep talking. Um, you have to 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 
maintain eye contact and know how to right. talk correctly. And it's not as easy as it was, you know, it's a different world. Right, right. So, and so for everybody listening, you really want to focus in on how you show up virtually, right? So even though your body language can't be seen in person, it can still be seen on camera. So if you're like slouched down and kind of in a little chilly mode, you know, like it doesn't, it doesn't present that well. You don't present as if you're engaged and you're not talking to the person, you know, like I already informed David before we started, like if you see me look to the side because I'm on my laptop and my cell phone, it's like I'm checking a comment or just making sure everything logistically is going well, right? And I tell all my guests that. So like, I don't want you to think I'm ignoring you. So that's like my upfront disclaimer. But otherwise, like I'm engaged with you because we're having a conversation. That's right. right. And like, I don't know if you've seen this like a video of a uh, poor teacher, like these kids, you know, she's teaching kids. They're quite young. The one in there's maybe like eight of them on there. The one kid in the middle is just knocked out sleep. I mean, he's just like this, <laughs> just completely <laughs> knocked out. <laughs> then you've got one that's just like in classrooms. BJ. Right. You know, but then you have one kid, he's like this on the side. And then there's like some naked person running behind him. There's like craziness. Right. Like, and those are the things you don't want to see during a job interview. Right. But it's like still being able to engage. And even when you're networking virtually, same thing, like having that same level of engagement and, and still being present is still very important. Yeah, definitely. I think, um, you know, that comes into to everything. I think, you know, video, video conference calls, you've got to be very, very cautious of, you know, we obviously had our technology problem yesterday with Wi-Fi, right? If your Wi-Fi gets, yes. you know, so I guess it's the same as getting stuck in a traffic jam or, you know, whatever. Right. It's, right, right. You can't do that meeting, and we we have had instances of a person not getting the job because there were two people had interview in that afternoon, and one person's Wi-Fi was working, one person's Wi-Fi wasn't working. Right. The client had to make a decision as a contract job, and so one person didn't get the job. You know, these are really, really important kind of elements now in this world. Right, um, right, right. Or if like if you can do it over your data, if you don't have Wi-Fi, and like I'm in London right now, so I really could do it over my data. We tried. <laughs> That's right. Because yeah. <laughs> I have international roaming, but it still was not working. Um, we 5G, did we? <laughs> no, we had, we tried, we tried a couple things and just that didn't work. So it was like, okay, well, we're going to reschedule. But I mean, for us, this is something that's easy to reschedule. You yeah. know, it's harder when, and you're right, it's harder for a job interview if your recruiter's on a crunch because it's a contract position or a client wants somebody to start immediately. They need to know that you're reliable. And this is really like, you know, I was saying kind of the benefits of this, but what people have to understand now as well, even in the IT world, is there is a huge, a, a massive amount more competition for candidates. And when I say competition yeah. for candidates, I don't mean skill shortages. There's a like this war for talent that we've spoken about probably before. There is a lot more candidates available and you are in much more competition with other people. You know, right. even in jobs like data, DevOps, you know, cloud infrastructure, where you might think these are roles where there are still skills choices. Yes, there are, but there are more candidates available. So whereas a client might have interviewed two or three people before, there is a good chance they might be interviewing six or seven people. So unless, and I know this is a key thing for you, VJ, is to make yourself stand out. Unless you are standing out, you have a, you, you will have a problem because those there are more people coming on the market um and if if we're assessing people where they have opened out like okay so i don't just need people from new york i can look at people in philadelphia and washington and i don't need people in chicago i could look at people in the whole of illinois straight away you've got more competition there as well haven't you so you have right, to right. Stand out and you have to be you're on top of your game in these interviews so for candidates that have stood out to you recently, was there something that they did that um, was almost like a game changer for you that really set them above the rest? That could be a helpful tip for anybody who's trying to interview now. Yeah, I think that, um, that for me, um, there's the, the basics, obviously, being responsive, showing the right motivations, answering the phone when you need to kind of answer the phone, you know, kind of sometimes out of hours, that sort of thing. I think for me, what was what's been important. Let's say we work within technology, is number one, doing the research. You know, being very very prepared. 
um, both about the kind of agency that you're working with, um, but also, you know, the company, the interview, where you're going, what the job is all about. Um, I think there is a slight change now, you know, even if that's not necessarily true, that clients feel maybe last year they would have been really, your customers have been really reaching out to you because, you know, in IT or in anything, but there is there is less choice. Right. Maybe more now people that are able to kind of sell themselves are able to talk through their resume uh, and through their kind of, you know, background and sell why you might be good for this job and why I'm interested for this, this interview. The other thing that really impresses me um, is the, so it's the importance of your social media, um, the importance of how you present yourself digitally, not just your resume, you know, even more. That's now, a good one. People will look at your CV. Oh, okay, that looks good. And then look at you on LinkedIn. Okay. Or, or in tech, they'll look at you on GitHub. They'll look at you on Stack Overflow. If you kind of know what those are, these kind of areas where you share code, that sort of thing. They will, if you're a digital designer, or what they will want to see your portfolio and they want to see that your portfolio is online. If you're a mobile app, they will look at the mobile apps you've made. So I think it's really, really important to, to, to kind of have that portfolio ready and make sure you're marketing yourself digitally because what, what is important, right, BJ, is if you think about it, when I'm sat in the interview with you, if I'm sat in a face-to-face -face interview, I can't really, and it's really poor, <laughs> to, like you've just said, I'm looking at my screen behind me here and I'm like, look at my phone. Right. But if I'm in a face-to-face -face interview, I really have to look at you and I have to focus on you, right? But if I'm in an interview with a candidate, I can look at their LinkedIn. I can, oh, yeah, I see you worked in such and such. You know, I've got about four or five different right. screens. So I can be firing things at you. I can be, you can be switching me off without saying anything because I've looked at your, your LinkedIn and your LinkedIn doesn't match what you're saying to me on a video. So your digital, pre you've put it here, your kind of social media, your digital presence, the, the work you do is really, really key to make sure that you can be as successful as possible. So when we start talking to candidates, we look at have they got the right tech? Are they selling themselves well? And is their resume good? Yes. But is your social media good? Are you on all the different channels that you need to be? Um, and does it match up with what you're going to sell about yourself? That's a great one. So I want to talk about that a little bit in case anybody's like joining us later or misses this. Having your social or your digital presence match what's going on with your resume is important and what you're talking about is important. So if your LinkedIn profile is kind of incomplete, you might want to get that complete, right? If you have a uh, digital portfolio, make sure it's updated. Don't be like, oh, I haven't updated that in five years. Well, then you need to do that as long, you know, when you update your resume, your digital profile needs to be updated as well. Get your LinkedIn right, you know, um, if you're using all the other social media accounts, especially if you put those on your resume, make sure that they're all up to date. Make sure your activity is something that you want your employer to see, right? You have to be careful of what you're putting out there. If you know your Facebook page is nothing but, you know, you on spring break, living it up, don't give out your Facebook. Make sure your Facebook page is private. <laughs> so then you won't have that problem. And have your feature pictures not be, you know, boys or girls gone wild. Let it right. be like a quote. Let it be some scenery, a sunset, something. So people go, okay, that's all they can see about you if your page is private. But for any of your public stuff, make sure it represents who you are well. And I know some people struggle because they might have like um, a side business or a hobby, then have a separate page for that and keep something professional if you're still job hunting. Yeah, I think the, the importance of social media in the world, right? It's not just like job hunting. It's, it's mm -hmm. But the importance of social media to help you or to hinder you is really, really important. And we know, and we both work in talent, right, EJ, but how much emphasis is placed on your digital profile as much as you yourself. Um, right. It's understandable because that's how the world works, but it's not, I don't think people always think about it, but it's even more prevalent now. Yes. Yes. Those, that's great. 
Great advice. Great things is that that's true. People totally forget about that. And you're right. When I was a recruiter, like I would go through the job boards. And if I found a resume, first thing I did was go to LinkedIn because sometimes like the job board resume might not have been updated. Yeah. And I would check their LinkedIn profile and their LinkedIn profile was more updated. So it's also like to validate information. Yeah. So keep something updated, yeah, yeah. you know. So that's that's a good one. Um, what kind of recruitment strategies are you now using since everything is virtual? I mean, you know, obviously like your old way of going out and maybe networking and shaking hands and all of that isn't the same. So how have you adjusted with your recruitment strategies? Um, well, uh, I would say that there's certain elements that are easier now for a recruiter. So we do, you know, for a long time, we weren't getting any applications from job ads. Now we oh. do. So it's quite nice. Um, so there are more active candidates, talk about active candidates quite a lot. So, you know, there's more referrals coming in, there's more people kind of coming to our website, you know, we are having more candidate flow to us. That doesn't necessarily mean that the types of candidates that we need, uh, are necessarily there for us. Sometimes they are, but we still need to do the search and selection tools that we did. Um, <laughs> there's a couple of points on that is. The first thing to say is when people work from home, and this might be something to consider if you're a manager, <laughs> if you're sat in the office, it's very difficult to speak to a recruiter when you're sat next to your boss, right? So we're finding it much easier to get in touch with candidates because they're bored at home and they're managing <laughs> to them. So can you speak at 11 a.m.? Yes, I can actually today. So, so it's really, really like, <laughs> you know, I think this is more for a manager. Just, just bear in mind that people can job seek much easier now so for us again speaking to candidates is, is is more easy one of the things we're doing and one of the things i think is really really important now is we have um and i think one of the ways we've gotten to yourself dj is that gcs now has this thing called gcs connect which is a basically kind of community brand and we used to do events like book meetups like live mm -hmm. but now we just do a huge amount of Kind of virtual networking events webinars conversations subjects topics that sort of stuff and we're finding it a really great way of like like meeting the expert talent that we're always looking out for and actually meeting the innovative companies that we want to do you know if we have 70 80 people attend an event that's 70 80 people that are interested in 5g that are interested in broadcasting that are interested in uh, serverless development um that is really, really a great way of resourcing finding candidates. So you've got 70 or 80 really, really interesting people that are actually committed to the, committed enough to actually go on and to end an event. So one of the things I would suggest is if you're looking for a job, getting yourself involved, like, you know, it's not just about sending an application. It's like, well, okay, so what agencies, what webinars, what meetups can I kind of attend and, where can I kind of go and where can I ask a kind of clever question and then catch up with the agent or the talent person after that? You know, one of our biggest clients, Discover, um, is currently hosting a virtual career fair, right? Discover is obviously, uh -huh. you know, Discover Financial Services, huge, really, really great employer in the US. They are currently hosting a virtual career fair, right? Um, Unfortunately, they, they, you can't go if you're an agent. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if, if I was someone who wanted to work for, for Discover, I would be all over that. And I would be there and I would be, you know, in the past, maybe the career fair, you'd have to go to Vegas or to Chicago where they're based. But now I can go and attend that, you know. And, right, right, right. As we say, we'll candidate rock up and see what I can do. So be involved in these virtual events because you probably wouldn't have had the chance to do it before. Right. So attend virtual events. Um, there are a lot of virtual career fairs that are going on. Attend those. See what um, different live events there are around recruitment, around things in your industry, because it is a good way to still network with people. Um, I have a whole course on bonding in a virtual world because I know people freak out over the word networking. Yeah. So I'm like, you're just bonding with people. So, you know, there's different platforms that do it. Um, I was even on a, like a mastermind um like a mastermind event I was on over the weekend and the platform we used had networking. It was speed networking for us and it was like so fast, but we have a, um, a Google sheet of everybody that attended with their contact. So you could find everybody's contact in case you didn't hit the connect button. 
but there are a lot of virtual events out there that you all want to look at to attend to help you still grow your network, help you find those connections, help you find those other job opportunities out there. And if anybody has any questions revolving around what they could be doing to make their um, their job search pop a little more, please feel free to ask. I mean, we got a CEO here of a recruitment company, so right. he's been doing it for a long time. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, I think it's um, it, sending your CV is kind of step one, I think. Now, in this more competitive world for candidates, you've got to tick on many boxes. Um, right. and the more um, the more kind of proactive you can be, the, the better opportunities you'll have to 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 find kind of opportunities. Um, and there are definitely, definitely lots of opportunities out there, you know. Definitely, definitely. So I had put up your website earlier in case anybody wanted to see what type of um, jobs you have or if they want to use GCS Connect, all that stuff. And I will show it up again. So if you missed it already. It'll be back up so you can see how to connect with David and the types of roles that his company looks for. They have a lot of IT jobs. They are looking for people globally. So, you know, my connections that are all over the world and you're in IT and you've been reaching out to me like, VJ, I need a job. And I'm like, I don't know anybody in your market. Well, this might be the time for you. <laughs> I'm that guy. No, we, we definitely are, you know, always interested in, 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 I think, I mean, we spoke about it before, you know, it's, it's, it's all levels, you know, from, people that are interested in moving into the career all the way through to kind of senior execs um and we want to help people we know how difficult the times are at this moment in time and and, and genuinely we we're talking to people that have been in a company for 10 years and haven't even been thinking about leaving really really connected to the company love their company but unfortunately they're not at their company anymore and what for me that's really really important and what people need to know is if you are one of those people that have just lost your job after 10 years, it's really, really bad. You know, it's terrible. It's a terrible, because you didn't expect it, right? Right. But the skills you've got, the ability you've got, is highly in demand. I know I said it's competitive, but you will get opportunities. And if you, right. you know, think about where you're at and then think about what you can do, there are opportunities out there and, and, opportunities to kind of really grow your career and that sort of thing at this moment. Yes. I always tell people that I'm like, you know, if you sit still in chaos, you'll find the opportunity mm. because there are people who have thrived this year, despite everything that's going on because they found the opportunity, right? There are people who still change careers that change jobs, you know, they got pay increases. Like there's still different, there's still some hope and some opportunity out there. You just kind of have to be a little resourceful and 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 think outside of the box sometimes so you know we talked about having that good presence with your virtual conversations right like be engaging you know make sure you can talk to somebody make sure your wi-fi is doing okay when you're having these conversations right or at least if you can't get on your wi-fi that your your data works but you're in a, a area where you have good coverage right so nothing is worse than like you know when you got to move your phone but like can you hear me can you hear me like nobody wants to do that so make sure you know, you're in a good spot um, and then connect with more people and, and definitely have that good social media presence because he's right. They are going to be looking at that while they're interviewing you. They're going to see what your LinkedIn looks like. I think um, for me, the other thing that we spoke about at the start is when we talked about the huge drop off in jobs and then mm -hmm. certain industries come back, right? So technology um, is all pervasive in all businesses from recruitment to you know retail to anything we all it's all based now on a technology bed and a technology platform i think it's really important for your viewers and for the people that you work with to really think about the industries that are doing well and then the industries that aren't so you would not be tracking through for air travel at this moment in time Right, you would not be thinking, oh God, I know where I want to kind of get into. I want to get into air travel. You know, I want to do more work in that and travel and that sort of thing. That's going to be a bad idea. You would not be looking at the kind of the entertainment industry, music, um, maybe streaming, maybe, but you know, cinemas, 
you know, bad idea, not great, you know, live music, um, you know, entertainment in terms of pubs, restaurants, even shopping, retail. These are not industries that are doing well at the moment. And then you start to think about, well, what is doing well, right? I don't know how you call it in the US, but the public sector, so the government, you know, mm-hmm. state, same thing, all that sort of stuff. You know, there's huge investment in those. One, because, you know, they've got to. And two, because they're obviously trying to kind of provide work. You know, there's huge investment in health. You know, in the US, some of our most busy clients are portals developed for health insurance. Okay, so obviously you're in the UK now, VJ. You can kind of see that obviously we've got a slightly different setup here now, the NHS and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and you can see how much we talk about it and how much we moan about it and whatever. But if someone's <laughs> away from us, we're like, no, it's the best thing we have, right? We get like signs up about it. And obviously, the US is a very different way of doing things. But that, that as an industry is an industry to, to really kind of get into and and think about you know the way that the US digitizes its health now is going to be a huge growth area um, right. whoever wins the election you know they have to right. kind of move forward with it you know so things like technology so networks cloud um, anything to do with providing kind of data mm-hmm. storage networks etc cetera, etc cetera. whatever industry whatever you do these is growth areas. Another key one is broadcast. And we're seeing a huge growth. And it's one of our core markets in terms of like the broadcast industry. Because people are at home <laughs> with nothing else to do, probably except kind of watching telly or, or you know. And, yeah. And so you've really got to think about the industries that are growing. And then you've got to think about your background in your industry. So if you come from the travel or entertainment industry, and that's where you've worked in tech or anything, is how you jump to industries that are growing um, and how you put yourself in a viable position. Now, if you've worked in, you know, um, the travel industry, travel industry is very based on data, right? So Uh use data capabilities and the types of technologies, but also, like I said, doing the research if you're going into a new industry because the industry that you worked in isn't doing very well, it's really understanding what the crossovers are in that industry, but also what that industry is all about. So, you know, if you go into public sector, how to put it, it's probably not quite as, you know, exciting or interesting as the, the music business, right? If you work in the music right. business, at this moment, who cares? You know, you want to, I want to get a job and I want to get an exciting job, but you might, you might have a different way of going into the in, the interview. So let's say you're interviewing the music industry. You and I both know, we, you and I have both talked to people who are really, really corporate in the past, right, VJ? And they're like going to go in and work for a really cool digital <coughs> company. So probably best you don't like wear that suit and like, have that, <laughs> you know, you just need to kind of make, make yourself a bit more cool. Whereas right. if you're used to working these really cool, but now you're going to go and, interview for a you know a a state state organization you need to probably make yourself a bit less cool you know and 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 think about the sort of industries that you're progressing yourself something you think about quite a lot is you know how you present yourself according to the industry isn't it right right and it's also when you're looking at the career change you want to look at your skills see where your skills gap is and then how to close that gap. Like that's like the first step in any career pivot, right? If you're like, okay, well, I wanna go into engineering, I wanna go into technology, math, anything in the STEM fields because STEM fields are always thriving, right? Yeah. They're always thriving. Yeah. People need healthcare, we need engineers, we need technology, like we need all that stuff. So if you wanna go into one of those, you can already see what skills do you have and what don't you have. Mm. And, then this, and then you know how you learn and based on how you learn, that's how you decide to close your skills gap, right? If you can self-teach yourself things, then you jump on the internet, go find a bunch of videos and learn how to do it. Grab a book, like whatever that is that looks like for you for being self-taught, do that. Mm -hmm. If you need a classroom type setting, you know, maybe you want to go take some courses and you can look for a certificate. If you want to go back to school, you know, you can go back to school, but you really need to see what are your options for closing that skills gap. Now, if you have like 90% of the skills, 
that's a very small gap to close. Yeah. So yeah. it might, you know, like for some people, I tell people, I'm like, it's not always I have to go back to school to get another master's degree, another bachelor's. Like it could be a certificate, right? Because maybe it's or certification. IT loves certifications. Mm. So maybe it is, okay, well, I'll go get certified in XYZ and do it in a boot camp and do it, accelerate it so I can learn this and then start doing some projects on the side so I can build up that portfolio. Mm. You know, there are different ways to figure out your skills gap that you need to close. Hi, Savanya. Thanks for joining us. Um, you know, like, so you made like a lot of really great like, points. Like, I don't know if that she's talking about me or you there. But you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's going to be, let's just say it's both of us. <laughs> you know, um, but it, it's, it's true. Like, you know, you look at what's thriving and you figure out how to do it. So many people are like, oh, but I can't code. I can't do this. You figure out a new smartphone every two years. Hmm. You can learn how to code. Right. Yeah. And it's just there's so many aspects. Like when people think technology, they don't even understand how many different types of careers there are within technology. Hmm. Right. Because there's even stuff that you can do that's not heavy on the coding side. If you have analytical skills, you can do like data analysis, business analysis. Right. Like there's so many different options that you can um, you can look at. Oh, she said she was talking to both of us. Oh, so <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, you know, so yeah, it's like really a matter of of looking at what your skill set is and knowing that you can close it. And before you're like, oh, but VJ, I'm too old. Mm. I can't change careers. Yes, you can. Once again, you learned a new smartphone every two years. Mm. Yeah, for sure. And 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 sometimes that means you know, particularly in this day and age, that you may have to uh, kind of change your expectations of what you might earn. You know, right. Have to take a step back. Take a step forward. Right. You know, you know, talk about kind of the age gap and that sort of thing. I mean, that's part of the problem sometimes of, of changing is, well, I'm used to earning $60,000 a year. I'm used to earning $100,000 a year. But at the moment, you're not earning anything. Um, so you need to right. earn something in order to kind of get yourself back on the game. So for me, I think um, it's really, really important to to kind of plan that. And I definitely think that anything you can do to to kind of upskill yourself, make yourself more kind of um, a viable option is really, really important. And there's certain things we said, like about attending an event, about, um, you know, being part of a particular kind of area and, you know, um, reaching out in different ways, uh, building different kind of connections and, and that sort of thing are really, really important. Because there are more people sending, like I said at the start, there's more people sending a resume. There's more people applying for a job, even in IT. Right. So right. maybe that's not going to be the way that's going to get you this job if you're changing industry. Maybe it's going to be, you know, even thinking about your network, you know, thinking, you know, who do I actually know that works in, you know, I, I, I feel that health insurance, you know, you know, that sort of area is going to be really, really good for me. How, who do I know that works in that? How do I cultivate relationships with people there? Even if someone doesn't even work in that particular area, but how can you introduce me to the talent people and, and give me a personal recommendation? You know, using those referrals, using that personal network that you have is really, really key. And yes. one of the things I've thought about quite a lot, and I've done myself personally, is, again, while we're working at home, <laughs> you have more time. Because you're not commuting, right? You're not like, I mean, ha I used to work, I live in a place called Reading, okay? Mm -hmm. And I usually work in a place called London, right? Which for your US viewers, you've probably heard of London, might not have heard of Reading. I know there is <laughs> Reading, is not the Reading, Alabama or something. Is Pennsylvania. It? Pennsylvania, yeah, it's different. Yeah. But um, there is a Reading in Berkshire, which is the original Reading. Um, but. Uh, <laughs> It took me an hour and a half to get to London every morning and an hour and a half to get back. Now, that's three hours of my life that I'm obviously looking at my phone, doing my emails, listening to mm -hmm. music, reading the paper. But it's, it's you realise how much that time is wasted. Commuting was wasted time. Do you agree? I don't know. What did you used to commute? Yes. Still? I used to commute. So I live in New York. Well, where I live at in New York is the suburbs, and I'm about an hour outside of uh, Manhattan and my commute on the train was an hour on an express train or an hour and 15 minutes yeah. and that's if I worked midtown 
Like I worked right above the train station. I worked at one Penn Plaza. That was like my best commute ever because I got off the train and had to go upstairs. But when I worked down in the Wall Street area, it's like an hour and a half, an hour and 40 minutes for me to get to work one way every day. So yes, definitely. And that was taking two different train lines. So definitely would, you know, do a lot of stuff on the commute. Yeah. So what I'm building up to is what I kind of, you've got more time, right? I yeah. Live in a, you know, I live, you know, live in Reading. Now my off commute is one minute, right? So I've got more time. <laughs> so I can, I can work more and do more stuff. Now, obviously, if you're looking for a job, then obviously you're not commuting. But one of the things I've really found is, is if you go to your phone, right, and you just go through and you just realize I've got thousands of people in this phone contact, like random people that I met at a party once that, you know, they gave me their number or I'm on this WhatsApp group with this person. And actually, right. I don't even know who this person is, but actually I've just noticed that this person works X place. Like you have a massive social network in your phone. Um, so what I try and do every week now is randomly call someone that I haven't spoken to for like six months and just like a friend from university and just like reach out. They talk about mental health and that. It might be quite good to do that. But I'm just right. like randomly reaching out to people and saying, hi, how are you? <laughs> oh, That's a, you for honestly, that is a great approach. That's something I even teach my clients, you know, when it comes to networking as well. I'm like, you know, reach out to people. Just check in on your people. Start a dialogue as simple as, hey, how you doing? How yeah. have you been surviving the pandemic? You know, just something that it's small. Already, isn't there? You know, yeah, you know. You know, connection isn't this rubbish, you know. Or right. Yeah. Or, you know, set up Zoom happy hours or coffee time or tea time and, and, and have your own little networking circle. Yeah, there's so many things that people can do. And, like, I've changed careers four times. So that's, like, my thing. Um and it's funny because all the stuff we've been talking about are literally modules I talk about with my clients. And I and so if anybody out there needs help with changing careers, please hit me up. And also you can check out my new program, which is all about how to do it. Mm. It's got like the seven steps that I've used to change careers four times. And a lot of it is what we've been talking about. It is, you know, preparing yourself for things that networking and then how to talk about yourself within that. So you know what to say to people. And I think the reason why people aren't reaching out and aren't networking the way they should is because they don't know what to say. Mm. Right. And sometimes, and I get that because when it comes to career changes, sometimes people give you these long tangents of stories because they don't know what they want. Mm. But if you know what you want, then just say what you want. You know, like I am looking to change from hospitality into healthcare because I figure with all my customer service background, I'd be really good to help sick, sick people. I can empathize with them. I can do this. I can do that. Right. And it's just like being clear, precise, and just telling people what you're looking for. Because then even if they don't know, they're like, oh, wait, but I know David and David has a recruitment company. Maybe he, you can talk to him. And if he's not right, maybe he knows somebody that you can talk to. Yeah. And it's about like building those kind of networks and being mm -hmm. about it and, and, and thinking of the different things that you you know and the people you know and genuinely i mean to kind of come from a recruiter or a salesperson and that's really what a recruiter is in the end with selling mm -hmm. the services of finding people one of the key things you never do is actually say have you got any jobs and can i recruit for you you know you just never say it. it's just a, just a, you have to try and connect with people without saying that the same as when you're building a network really and trying to kind of get yep. it done. So, oh, hi, um, I'm looking for a job. Can can you help me? Because that really doesn't work very well. You know, and that's what most people do, especially to recruiters. It's like, hi, I'm VJ. I need a job. And you're like, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's lots of people that do that, so you're not making yourself stand out. If you're using your network and coming in that way or attending an event or reaching out to someone that you used to go to go to school with and that you have an alumni network with or something like that this is the way to fast forward that to, to build that connection straight away um, and genuinely and we talked before about digital transformation being driven by cv19 right you could argue that career change is also being driven by that because there are whole industries that are letting go of huge amounts yes. of people in one go right so yes this isn't something you you know you can be thinking about being oh yeah maybe i'm a bit bored of my job and i want to do a career change this is now right slap bang in your face there you go 
you have to mm-hmm. do a change because the industry or the job that you were doing. I mean, our chancellor, um, we have a, a chancellor who's the guy that mm-hmm. the you know guy called Rishi Sunak, right? They're they're doing all this furlough stuff in the UK, and they're now trying to. He was talking about viable jobs. So viable jobs is a really really harsh word, but it's basically where jobs that are worth protecting in the new economy. Yeah. So that's like. <laughs> So that meant there were jobs before that the UK government, and I don't know about the US, I mean, the US has got a very different system, but then the UK mm-hmm. government is deciding that we are not going to protect some jobs. Some jobs will not be in existence now. And yeah. if you were doing them, you're not a viable job anymore. Right, which which has to like make you feel like less of a person because all of a sudden you've been doing this job for how long and now it's like worthless? Like since when? You know, I I think for us, we discovered our supply chain people, how valuable they were, how essential they were. Right. It it isn't just the medical employees, but it was the people that kept us fed. Yeah. You know, the the drivers, you know, like my brother is driving trucks now. He's been doing that. I think he's been doing that for about two or three years now. Not even sure. Like at one point he just decided he wanted to drive trucks. I was like, okay. And he loves it. You know, he loves being out on the road doing it. And he's worked in IT before, but now he's driving trucks. But, you know, he was on the road, you know, and he was delivering toilet paper. Like, he was the man because he's delivering toilet paper. <laughs> you know? It's all on its head, really, isn't it? So, yeah. You know, I, we, I talk about, you know, people that do live music. You know, that's really sad when you think about it because they're fantastic and you know, well, a lot of them are now doing it. They're doing like zooms and different things yeah, to, yeah, to, to, to different it. ways to do it. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, if you can shift, shift. Yeah, if if you can shift virtually, shift your business, shift your career virtually. If you can't shift, then you then it's time for a change. Yeah, that's right. And and there are ways again to kind of go back to what you just said of of shifting what you do to a more virtual mm-hmm. setup. But this goes back to what we were saying about being able to present yourself in that way you know if you are a live musician i don't know how many live musician viewers we've got but if if you're looking at yes you can do things but you need to present your whole business in a completely different way now and and you will be kind of successful but you know that's just one example of right how people need to to kind of do their own digital transformation as most businesses are doing so i i guess it goes back to what we talked about at the start everyone has been hit by this and the world has changed very, very rapidly. Everyone has had to transform the way they work. But like you said, Vijay, I guess that the the people that will survive and thrive in this will, will are able to kind of, you know, react and make the best out of the situation. And there's there's a lot of positives kind of coming out of this situation, I think. Right. Right. Yeah. See, Derek said media DJs. Yeah. I mean. Instagram has been ruled by like a uh, DJ D nice, right? Like he's yeah. been DJing and like just helping people get through quarantine because he's just playing good music. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he never thought like that was a reinvention for him. He never thought that the one day he decided to just go live and play music turned into like three hours and turned into club quarantine where tons of like actors and celebrities pop in. Yeah. You know, and he's playing music, but there's like such a community of people. I mean, I've jumped in there and it's been like 12,000 people listening to this man play music, you know, and he's just and he's a DJ. So he's just playing different music, you know, no requests. He just lets it go. Whatever he's feeling like playing, you know, that's what he plays, you yeah. know. And, and but I mean, if you adapt yeah, like and adapt fast, right, if you learn to adapt mm. and adapt fast mm. and I think that will really help people survive throughout all of this because too often we're so stuck in I don't want to change yeah. that it you know it doesn't really serve us the way it could. No, we have no idea what's going on with this. We never do. Whenever thing changes in the world, right? Like we never know what's going to happen. And you can wait and then react. But then somebody's going to beat you to the pump to the punch, right? A lot of people are waiting to be post COVID, but you can do something now. Like you can be prepared for that, preparing for that now. So yeah, I mean, I've had a lot of clients. Um, I actually 
thrive during this. I almost burnt out in April. I had so many people coming to me for resumes and career advice. And I had like a third of my clients in April who were like, well, I've been thinking about a career change. I might as well now because we don't know what's going to happen. That's right. Yeah. Right. So, and a couple of them have already changed careers. So, you know, um, yeah, some, cause some I worked with in May, some a little later into the summer. So most are on their way to changing their careers. One had a big skills gap to close. So that person's going to take the longest because they they're going they went back to get like a certificate program. It's like a 10 month program or something. But, you know, it's like being it's but it's knowing you need to adapt. Mm -hmm. Right. Even for event planners having to switch from we have all of these in-person events to doing a great virtual event that also has a good participant experience mm. right like if you could find in the right platform and there's so many platforms out there right so if you find like the right platform where people could still talk to each other still could get some networking in like that really showed your event was more than just a zoom you know yeah. And, and that really made the difference. You know, like I said, the event I was on over the weekend was phenomenal. Like that's where I actually met Zavanya. Um, she was on that event. She was one of, one of the people I got to do some speed networking with. And then we had a conversation the other day, but I mean, it was like the whole way the event was presented, like the, the chat was very engaging. People still got to talk to each other, you know, during the breaks and everything. So just learning how to adapt and figure it out. I mean, in some environments you can't, and, you know, and some you really can. So it's really looking at, so how can I do this now? Or is it maybe you start teaching part of your knowledge base? If you were doing things in person that you no longer can do in person, maybe it's now you start teaching others how to do it. Yeah. And I think, um, yeah, I think for me, I think what's, what's really important is uh, that there is a lot of benefits coming out of this. Um Positives. I mean, just to use that the the, the, the example of the DJ. You know, mm -hmm. people are more drawn to that. You know, we we can have these webinars and virtual events where we have five hundred people, and you can, can cross communicate. And you know, we were connected with VJ through one of these events. And now we're talking, and now we're doing this mm -hmm. in the past. That would have been well, people wouldn't going to do that, right? So you can create networks, build networks, work with people much better. There are obviously you know and talk about this the kind of the negative aspects of this in terms of job seeking in terms of the competitive element but also in terms of being onboarded and working kind of remotely and that sort of stuff you don't get as much kind of interaction with your customers but the, i think my last point on this is i think it's really really important that people like you said coming out of this as a business person i think that we are we're, we're be under pressure in business for the next six months to 12 months be very careful of making any rash decisions and just kind of leaving your company because they had a bad day or something like that you know really think about it okay. <laughs> because if you're so solid and secure in your job then you've got to make those decisions for the right right decisions it's not this is not the right time to kind of take any crazy decisions um and i think as well when you are assessing a company to work for and what they're all about you know obviously we look at a number of things but think about how secure the company is you know um <laughs> will they survive are they are they set up in the right way um are they are they surviving and thriving in this or are they struggling um because you want to make sure that you are secure um and that you have you have a kind of a good platform both in terms of you yourself in terms of the job and the company you're working for um, and I think that should always be in job seeking and job search. You would have done it anyway, right? But particularly now, just to make sure that you're 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 doing all your your own due diligence about right. like, the companies you're going to work for because it is important. That's great advice. Well, I want to let people know how to reach you again. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so. I want to do that as you finish up your last point. But if anybody wants to reach out to David, that is his company's website. That's very good. Yeah. And he is on LinkedIn. So look him up on LinkedIn. He is tagged in this post as well. So definitely connect with him. But please continue. I just want to make sure we threw that in there. Yeah, no, that's fine. I think I, what I was going to say was um, we are very well aware in the, the business we're in. There's a lot kind of going on in the world at the moment. It's very difficult times. Um, and that. Uh, you know there are opportunities um and 
like you said, VJ, there's lots of opportunities to kind of grow and change. Um, but to make sure that you're kind of keeping yourself safe, both in terms of the career mm-hmm. that you're doing and obviously in terms of health and safety and that sort of thing as well. So, yeah, very strange times, but opportunities up. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so if we don't have any questions, I will let you go. I know you are a busy man, yes. um, but thank you so much for your time. This was great. Um, if anybody, like I said, if you want to connect with him, that's their website. GCS Connect is where you're doing your series. Um, is that more geared towards more HR people or is um, that open? Sorry, so it's both in terms of technology, some very high tech, like very tech focused, but we also do ones around diversity, talent, you know, the workforce, that sort of thing as well. Okay. So there's different ones. I know I had actually talked to David because I'll be on a panel for them for one of the DNI series yeah. that they do. So I'm looking forward to that. Hey, um, and we, PJ. yes, the tables yeah. will be turned. And it's funny because we actually got connected through, I know I'm probably going to say her name wrong. Aoife. Aoife. No, Effie. Effie Molin. Oh, that's right. Yes, yes. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She is my guest next week. Um, she is uh, an executive and leadership coach. So we'll also be talking more about career changes and um, just leadership in these times. So that will be next week's topic. We will be back at the same time next week um, because I'm still in the UK. And then I'll go back to my... Oh, no, I can't say that. I'll probably be at this time. This might be the time for the month. I might just get a lot of guests in Europe while I'm over here. So this yeah. might work for the month. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, but it was great talking to you. Great having you here, David. Thank you so much for your time. Please connect with David. Um, any of my HR friends out there, if you want to talk recruitment strategies with somebody and you're looking at tech people, please reach out to David. That's what his company is doing now. They're really focusing in on more of their strategies and attracting top talent. And if you are top talent, reach out, connect, see what opportunities that they have. Fantastic. Well, yeah, thank you very much for the invite and look forward to speaking to people. Yes, yes, yes. So you all have a great day. Stay safe and sparkle bright.